So let's have fun, okay? Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're looking at turning points in TV shows where a character went from being a member of an ensemble to the MVP. What I said was, give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Do you understand? Number 10, Captain Holt partakes in office game, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Raymond Holt is introduced as the Nine-Nine's no-nonsense new captain. As such, you wouldn't expect him to be the funniest character. It's 9 a.m. Why is no one working? Amy Santiago is a few minutes late, and we're all trying to guess why. I like to play. Yet the late Andre Brower could spin the most basic lines into comedic gold, a talent many didn't realize until the final decade of his career. Brower's gift for deadpan is on full display in this cold open, where the department guesses why Amy Santiago is behind schedule. As everyone else gives outlandish explanations, Holt has the most sensible theory, which turns out to be right. I'd say she's in line at the bank. This is fun. Although the punchline might seem straightforward at first, the true comedy stems from how invested Holt gets in something so mundane. It's not as if Holt won anything, but he acts as if he nailed the million dollar question. Do you care to explain yourself? I'm just 70 seconds late. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Santiago, you will tell us, and you will tell us now. There is a problem at the bank. Hot damn! Number 9. Moira Rose's Wine Commercial, Schitt's Creek. Catherine O'Hara was a comedy legend well before Schitt's Creek, but Moira Rose became her career-defining role with this scene. The former soap star stages a comeback as a wine spokesperson, although she struggles to get several lines out, including her own name. Hello, I'm Moina Rose, and if you okay, let- Back to wine, still rolling. Why, why? You said Moina. Sure did. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I'm good. It's I'm great. Good. Please. I'm All right, good. get out of there. With an accent that's hard to pin down, Moira already had an odd way of pronouncing certain words. This commercial takes her unnatural delivery into overdrive, and the wine doesn't help. Moira eventually powers through one take. Even then, Moira flubs multiple words, doing her best to tiptoe around these slip ups to the next line. The muskmelon goodness to his oak chardonnay, and the dazzling peach curl bat pull to his Riesling Rioja. She almost makes it to the end until the name of the winery trips her up. Still, Moira keeps going without saying, Cut! You'll remember the name Herb Irvling. Ger. Bert Herngeif. Irv Herblinger, Bing Livehanger, Livelink, Bert Herkern. Number 8. Samantha Jones on Mr. Right, Sex and the City. It didn't take long for Samantha to establish herself as our favorite Sex and the City character. In the first episode, the ladies sit around the table discussing the seemingly fruitless pursuit of Mr. Right. Look, if you're a successful saleswoman in this city, you have two choices. You can bang your head against the wall and try and find a relationship, or you can say screw it and just go out and have sex like a man. Samantha booms onto the scene with confidence, discussing her key to a happy sex life. Viewing Mr. Right as an illusion, Samantha focuses on treating herself as she goes from man to man. No strings attached. Sweetheart, this is the first time in the history of Manhattan that women have had as much money and power as men, plus the equal luxury of treating men like sex objects. Yeah. In the past, this might have been treated as shallow. Samantha spoke to a new generation, though, encouraging others to unapologetically embrace their sexuality and not wait around for someone else to come along. Samantha immediately knows who she is and what she wants, making us wish she was part of our inner circle. No, no, believe me, if the right guy comes along and you two right here, this whole thing, right out the window. Uh, no, 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 listen, so. the right guy is an illusion. You understand that you can start living your life. Number seven, Richie wears suits now, the bear. From the get-go, Richard Jeremovic was in the running for our favorite The Bear character. He officially claimed this title following his stint at a fancy restaurant. The foul-mouthed Richie has talent, although his stubbornness, temper, and insecurities constantly get in the way. Do you think this is below you or something? <laughs> Man, I think I'm 45 years old polishing forks. No one is asking you to be here. I don't think anybody remembers your name. Nice try. Well, quick to judge this upscale work environment, Richie not only walks away with a newfound respect for the restaurant business, but himself as well. Finding that he's been holding himself back, Richie begins to see his true potential. Trailing today, get changed. No more forks? 
No more forks. You look good. It was kind of like armor. Yeah, man, that's the point. This is reflected through his new wardrobe, proudly announcing in the following episode that he's a suit guy now. Changing attire is one thing, but this shift in attitude is what elevates Richie to the top of the food chain. Your suit is is nice. Oh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. I wear suits now. Nice. You smell good. Oh, uh, thanks. Number six, Tobias Funke blues himself. Arrested Development. With most shows, selecting a favorite character isn't much of a contest. Watching Arrested Development, a case can be made for every member of the Bluth family. Reflecting on the series as a whole, there is one moment that we keep coming back to. Tobias discovers the Blue Man Group. Tobias, meanwhile, discovered that what he thought was a support group turned out to be a team of bald men painted blue. Everything about this subplot finds Tobias at his most hilariously inept. From initially assuming that the music act is a support group for depressed men to his attempt to get into character. If I hadn't sought out a support group, I never would have gotten this gig as an understudy for a performance art group. You know, the universe works in mysterious ways. You know, Tobias, you only need to paint your head and hands blue. This leads to a line that continues to crack us up even years later. Whenever we're feeling blue, we can always count on this character to turn us red with laughter. Do you have an audition yet? Oh, no, no, I'm not in the group yet. No, oh, <laughs> I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> There's gotta be a better way to say that. Number five, Eleven saves her friends. Stranger Things. Silent but deadly, but also kind of adorable, Eleven had the makings of a fan favorite from episode one. Mysterious powers, a cool haircut, and an obsession with egos will only take you so far, however. You know you have to pay for those. Hey, stop right Please. You have to pay for those. Stop right there. Thief! Thief! Eleven solidified herself as one of the great modern TV characters with a rescue that was equally badass and uplifting, literally with the latter. Following a falling out with her friends, Eleven returns to find Mike and Dustin in peril. Do you hear that? What? Ow! Ow! Hey there, frog face. Saving Mike from a nasty fall, she guarantees that those boys won't be messing with her friends ever again. It's hard for anyone else to top Eleven after this display. Listening to Dustin tell off his tormentors, though, he's got to be at least second. Go. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Go. Yeah, that's right. You better run. Number four, Tanya McCoy spreads her mother's ashes. The White Lotus. Jennifer Coolidge has been giving scene-stealing supporting performances for years. She went a step further in The White Lotus, stealing the whole show. As the wealthy Tanya McCoy, Coolidge found the perfect middle ground between tone-deaf and empathetic. I don't want tonight to be a downer. You know, my mother would have wanted us to have a good time. So let's have fun, okay? No scene better demonstrates this than when Tanya spreads her mother's ashes. Tanya isn't alone, although she isn't surrounded by friends, family, or even casual acquaintances. She's accompanied by other White Lotus guests, whom Tanya believes to be a support group. And she tried very, very hard to be a really good mother, even though she didn't have any maternal instincts or skills exactly tell her the truth, which adds to the cringiness of Tanya's bitter eulogy. Tanya manages to be the show's funniest and most tragic character simultaneously, a balancing act that she'd continue until, well, let's just say this moment is one example of foreshadowing. <laughs> oh, but my mother, mother, mother. Ah. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, oh, maybe, yeah. Well, we, yeah, back I'm my... Number three, Bacon, Eggs, and Ron Swanson, Parks and Recreation. Ron Swanson isn't easily broken. When you rip a delicious meal away from him, though, Ron isn't just left with an empty stomach. After his favorite restaurant is closed down, Ron's night is riddled with one disappointment after another. I should have been here. What happened to the steaks that were in there when they closed? Do you think they got eaten? Going through the stages of grief, 
Ron accepts that his night won't end with a mouth-watering steak. The only thing that can start the healing process is breakfast for dinner. A plate won't do, however. Ron makes it clear to the server that he's not leaving without eating every last ounce of eggs and bacon. This isn't a steak. Why would you call it that on your menu? I don't know what to tell you, man. Just give me all the bacon and eggs you have. If Ron were this serious and thorough at work, the government may actually accomplish something. His intense passion for food has made him the most quotable character in the Parks Department. I worry what you just heard was, give me a lot of bacon and eggs. What I said was, give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Do you understand? Number two, Tony balances two families, the Sopranos. Watching The Sopranos for the first time, you'll likely find yourself thinking, yeah, it's good, but why does everyone say this is one of the great mob stories? That is until episode five when you'll think, oh, now I see what this show is all about. More specifically, you'll see what Tony Soprano is all about. Not sure, but I think I just saw Fabian Petrullio. Refresh my memory. What's he before your time? Made guy, he flipped about 10 years ago and he got busted for peddling H. Right got a lot of people. Tony is a family man, but he's also married to the mob. Taking his daughter on a college road trip, Tony runs into a familiar rat. Killing two birds with one stone, Tony drops Meadow off at an interview while teaching Febby a lesson about speaking to the feds. You know which trouble you're in now? You took an oath, and you broke it. It's a brutal scene to watch, yet one that epitomizes what makes Tony such a fascinating anti-hero. I told myself, it's just a coincidence. Taking his little girl to college. Yeah, one thing about us wise guys, the hustle never ends. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Cam becomes Fizbo, Modern Family. This episode won Eric Stone Street an Emmy for a reason. Well, I'm Fizbo the Clown. I don't know who this Uncle Cam is, but he sure sounds handsome, doesn't he? <laughs> you owe Ruth a job, Ozark. Miss Langmore and her one-liners thankfully won't be going anywhere. You owe me a job. What? Am I speaking Greek? You owe me a job. How do you figure that? It's not tough. You got me fired from the last one. Liz Lemon can have it all. 30 Rock. Whenever we down a sandwich at airport security, we think of this. You're choosing a sandwich over a guy. That is less cliche. I can do it. I can have it all. Jasper's two shots. The after party. An earworm that'll leave you hoping he's not the killer. George Costanza on Society. Seinfeld. The ultimate supervillain origin story. Does she care? No. Does anyone ever display the slightest sensitivity over the problems of a fellow individual? No. No. A resounding no. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Tyrion Lannister Slaps Joffrey Game of Thrones Joffrey Baratheon has got to be the most hated character in Game of Thrones. We'd go as far to say that he's the most hated character in television. It only makes sense that our favorite Thrones character would be the one who isn't afraid to slap Joffrey around. Tyrion quickly won us over with his witticisms, although actions speak louder than words. One word and I hit you again. I'm telling mother. Go, tell her. As Joffrey acts like his usual obnoxious self, Tyrion motivates his nephew to show the stark sympathy by slapping him silly. Tell them how very sorry you are, that you are at their service and that all your prayers are with them. Do you understand? You can't. <laughs> Do you understand? Joffrey talks big and will only accumulate more power with time. But Tyrion shows just how pathetic the future king is with the simplest gesture. While Tyrion would have had plenty of other memorable moments, our love for the character started here. The prince will remember that, little lord. I hope so. If he forgets, be a good dog and remind him. Which moment left you with newfound appreciation for a character? Let us know in the comments. Started. You're talking to a king! Ah! And now I've struck a king. Did my hand fall from my wrist? 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.